Well, hello, hello, hello again. It is I, Echo Craft. So once again, we're going to talk about synthesizers and their prices. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So as you can see on my screen, I have synthesizers. And then if you look closely, uh, they start at uh, 100 to 200 all the way up to 1500 to $2,000, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about, um, I know a lot of people liked the last video. There were some trolls who didn't like the last video, and that's fine, whatever. You know, um, if I answer you, I answer you. If I don't, I don't. You usually get a like even if I don't like what you said or you'll get a comment, whatever. Uh, I am who I am. And that's all that I am. And it says, forgive me, Father. And at the bottom it says, for I have synth. And there's a nun praying and there's a synthesizer. See that microphone a little bit there? There it is. Great t-shirt. Check it out. I'll put the link down in the description if you want to buy one. Uh, has nothing to do with me. I didn't make them. I wish I did. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I digress. So anyway, up on the screen... Uh, we're going to talk about synthesizers and how low the prices can be for a really, really nice synthesizer. So without further ado, here we go. All right. So let's, uh, let's take a look here. So right now, these are some synthesizers that actually, uh, they don't, well, this hasn't come out yet. It's, you can pre-order it. So this is the Behringer uh, MS5, 37 a note analog keyboard. I believe it's, either, I forget if it's monophonic uh, or dual, uh, duophonic, but it starts off at $599. Not too shabby. Let's take a look at it. It's a very fine looking synthesizer, I might add, and it is to mimic the, uh, I forget, was it the SH-5 or something like that by Roland? So yes, Behringer is cloning, but there it is. It's very nice, $5.99. Heard some demos already, it sounds amazing. You know, I mean, come on, come on. Come on, guys, here we go. We're gonna go back. Uh, right here, we have another Behringer synth. Oh, what could that be? Oh, that's the Model 15. Let's take a look at that. Oh, $299. Now, some people are going to be like, oh, it's Behringer. You like Behringer? Well, yes, I do. But what can I say? You know, other people are going to be like, well, that's because you're, you're cheap, or of course you're going to stick up for Yuli because Yuli is a scumbag. And, you know, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of the rhetoric. I'm tired of the stupidness. What this all means to me is that, uh, you know, $299, I'm going to get a killer synthesizer. And it sounds amazing. Again, I've heard some demos of this already. It is out for pre-order. You can't get it right now, but, you know, it's on Sweetwater's site, so that means it's a real thing. Uh, and, and let's jump over here. Now, here's something that I really am considering on buying. Um, this is the Oberheim TO-5, Compact Polyphonic Analog Synthesizer. Now, I had mentioned this synthesizer in uh, the last video I just did on how this particular synthesizer uh, is low in price and sounds like the UBX-8, um, or OBX-8, sorry, UBX is, uh, that's Behringer. Um, and it sounds like it, right? I mean, that's what they said. So you get all the cool stuff and then some, because this has got some, this has got some modern flares to it um, and some effects, right? For $14.99. Now, the other one costs over $8,000. So I'm, I'm really considering this. I've always wanted a piece of Oberheim equipment. This is a combination of Oberheim and sequential. Um, and uh, yeah, I just think it's, it's, it's nice. It sounds amazing. And it would be a lot of fun to own, you know. And at that price, I wouldn't mind buying it. So there you have it. Great, right? Let's go. 
Let's go. Let's go look at some more now. All right, let's see. I'm not going to cover the Polyand tracker. Just not going to. Uh, but it's there, $7.99. We have a Yamaha uh, Modi X8. Um, $19.99, if you like that all-in-one workstation thing. Not too shabby. Decent price. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Now, here is the new Moog uh, Spectravox, the semi-modular analog special processor. Yeah. Um, I heard demos of it. Sounds like stuff I can get out of a foot pedal for a lot less money than $5.99. So we're going to skip right over that because I was not impressed by that. And the vocoder on it, I just like, meh. You know, Moog also makes a very expensive vocoder, which you're looking at, uh, I think it's like $5,000. Come on. Anyway, uh, again, another Paulian Tracker, six ninety nine, dollars uh, Yamaha uh, MX88, you know, $9.99 if you need something like that. Here's something that's interesting. I like the uh, the uh, Atoria Astrolab. I think it's pretty cool. You know, if you're a preset person or maybe you just want to use it gigging, it's a gigging musician's uh, keyboard. You know, um, it's kind of like a plug-out keyboard. Um, I like it. I thought it sounded great. <clears throat> it looks nice. Uh, and $15.99, not too shabby. That's That's not a bad price at all, you know. Um, and then, of course, we have the Behringer Edge, which I own. Um, I had a DFAM. That's basically a cloned DFAM. Personally, I think this is better than the DFAM. I had a DFAM, and I think there's more uh, stuff involved with this guy. Um, let's open it up, take a look at it. Uh, it's got some pretty cool features. This is my favorite feature. It's MIDI. And it has, uh, it has a bunch of patch points, and it's CV, um, but it's MIDI. Yeah, that means I can use it with anything. Okay? So, yeah, so uh, $199, and the DFAM isn't MIDI, and it is um, $599. And I sold it, and I don't really miss it. Uh, right here, we have another uh, Mod, Mod X or Mod X7, uh, I, I guess. It's a 76-note keyboard, uh, 1549. Again, if you like that kind of stuff, that's great. I had a motif back in the day. It was fun. I uh, got bored with it. You know, it is what it is. All right. Behringer Pro 800, 8-voice eight polyphonic analog synth. Oh, oh is, it, oh, is it copying a sequential? Yes, it is. Um, it's Behringer, right? Uh, three ninety nine. I've actually heard this. Uh, if you go on to um, uh, if you go on to Sweetwater, uh, which we're on, uh, and you Daniel Fisher does a great uh, video on this, and it sounds amazing, really does. I know Synth Samurai had it. He didn't like the little uh, the little plasticky buttons because um, it's like a covered plastic membrane. Uh, he didn't like that too much, but he did say that the sound of the synthesizer was very adequate and sounded amazing. Um, 30 reviews, four and a half stars, not too shabby. $3.99. Let's go back. Oh, and here's one of my favorites. This is the Moog su sub Subsequent, I freaking hate that name, 37. And I get it. I know what it stands for. Um, $18.99, Moog. Nice synth. A lot of people swear by it. Um, but again, you know, inexpensive. I consider those inexpensive prices for decent synthesizers. Uh, we'll skip this one here. This is the Roland. Maybe, maybe, maybe this, this stuff is what you're looking for. This is the uh, uh, Roland. Uh, no, what is this? This is the Roland Juno DS88. Yeah. Um, for eleven ninety nine, okay. Uh, over here we have um, oh, this this is guys, come on, come on. This synthesizer is right behind me, right there. Um, I have to tell you that other than the uh, 
the uh, Expressive E Osmos. This is one of my favorite synthesizers now. Um, the Atoria Mini Freak 37 Key Hybrid is a no-brainer to buy a synthesizer. Without question. I would even suggest this as a beginner synthesizer. It's a hybrid synth. Um, it's six voice polyphony, as you can see. Two sound engines, 256 factory presets, 256 user presets, 22 oscillator and uh, mods, 64-step uh, sequencer, LFOs, analog filtering. That's my favorite part. That's what makes it hybrid. It's, an an it's got analog filters built into it, um, and it's a digital synth. It, it sounds incredible. $5.99. Buy it. You'll, you won't regret it. Okay. Next on the list. Let's see what we got here. Uh, this is another Autoria. This is the um, 37 key. No, what is this? This is, oh, the special edition. Yes. This one just came out. This is the Stellar. And I'm so bummed, man, because I really wish a lot of people are hating on colored keys other than black and whites, right? I love this. And I wish I waited because it came out right after I bought my Mini Freak. And, and it's just so nice. Um, I don't know. I should have returned mine and just bought this because this is really, really nice. Um, but, you know, and it also has a bunch of limited uh, uh, sounds that you can actually, if you have a Mini Freak, you can actually go on a Torius site, download the software version of the Mini Freak, and then, um, yeah, go from there. Um, and it, it'll, it, this is another thing I love about the Mini Freak. You can use the software with the hardware and vice versa, which is really cool. Um, you can create your own patches on the software and load them up into the uh, Mini Freak. Pretty cool. $5.99. Stellar edition. All right, here we go. This is a very interesting little synthesizer. I played this, and I have to say, this is a very interesting synth. This is the Yamaha Reface CS Virtual Analog Synthesizer. This tiny little keyboard is huge. It's got a huge sound. It sounds amazing. Um, check it out if you can. I know some of the stores like... Uh, um, guitar center, uh, if you, you know, if there's one in, in around your area or if there is a music store in your area that has one of these, ask to check it out. It's actually really cool. $2.99. Yeah, we like that. We like those prices. Here we go. $1.99, ladies and gents, for a clone of the SH-101. Yeah, that's what this is. The MS-1RD analog synthesizer with hand grip. I, I put the hand grip away. It, I, don't, I don't have it. I don't know if you can see it back there. It's next to the Mini Freak. This synth can get real bassy, man. This is like my bass synth. Um, I love this thing. It sounds amazing. Uh, and it gets, it gets squelchy, too. You can do some really cool stuff with it. $199. Bucks. Come on. All right. Let's see, the Behringer uh, Selena Strings. I, I don't really know a lot about this instrument. Um, right here, it's got five stars. I, I do know, I've listened to some of the demos. It's $2.99. Um, it is very nice. It sounds amazing. If, you're used to, if you like those real old school analog um, uh, synth strings, um, this, is, this is for you. Um, I can get a lot of those synth string sounds out of some of the, the synths that I have, but this is really, really nice. $2.99, okay? Um, and I'm not, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, and you should actually go on to Sweetwater's website, and um, if you put in all of the uh, filters that I put in, you get, now if you notice, I skipped the 2000 to 3000 range, because I'm just showing $1,500 to $2,000 synths here as I just want to give people a heads up of the quality that you can get. You can start writing some of that music that you've been wanting to write and using uh, less expensive synthesizers. Okay? Um, so, yep, here's another one. So this is the Juno, uh, the Roland Juno uh, X61 note synthesizer. This is kind of like an all-one workstation. Let's take a look at this. $17.99. Kind of looks like a Juno 106, which is very cool. 
Um, I actually was looking at this synthesizer and I love, I've always loved the Juno 106. I own two of them in the past and I wish I never got rid of them like I did, like a dumbass. Um, but this is very nice. Um, again, Roland, quality name, quality product, built like a tank. You know? Um, let's see, Yamaha Reface. This is the DXFM. So this is Yamaha... Uh, came out with this um, because people wanted that uh, that DX7 sound. Um, personally, I think this is nice, and I've checked it out. I'm not really that impressed with it. Um, I was more impressed with the CS. Um, but if you want a good FM synth, a lot of fun to play with. Um, the Korg Op 6, love it. It's back there behind me. Absolutely love it. Fun to play. Plus, you get the software for it. I do all my own patches um, on the software, download them into the synth, and I'm good to go. Cool stuff. Uh, what else we got here? Ah, here we go. Here's a clone for you. Look at this puppy. This is the Beringa. I just like saying that. The Behringer UBXA 16 voice bitimbral polyphonic analog synthesizer. Now, this was a direct attempt, obviously. Um, by Behringer to go after Oberheim and they did it and you know everybody thought it wasn't going to come out everybody thought it was a big farce and everybody thought it was going to suck this my friends looks just like the OBX8 only this one's six voice um, and look at the price $11.99 now some people were like oh this is kind of crappy I'm not really into this you know, it's probably cheese. It's probably made like, no. Because if you go online onto YouTube and you see some of the people that reviewed this, you're going to be impressed. Now, I heard that the, um, the uh, patches that came with it uh, aren't that great. Okay. Well, um, but I did, I did hear it myself and I actually like them. So if you want that, that 80s, uh, you know, uh, synth wave, or even, uh, you know, I, I imagine, I think, I'm pretty sure um, Eddie Van Halen used uh, an Oberheim on Jump. That classic, bump, 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 that classic sound, right? Um, pardon the singing there, I know, you know, well. But anyway, $11.99, with no 99 cents after it. It's just $11.99, killer. All right. Here we go with another Artoria. This is the Micro Freak hybrid synthesizer. So this was before the Mini Freak. Um, I passed on this synth. Um, I was at NAMM and I checked it out. And um, now when this first came out, it was $2.99. It's gone up in price. It's kind of a classic. Um, it's got this touch plate uh, keyboard. If I can zoom in on this. It's got this touch plate keyboard, which is very interesting. Um, and it's got a bunch of cool features. It's basically, you know, if you, if you want something smaller, obviously the Mini Freak offers a lot more, but um, this is actually really cool. I didn't care for the touch plates, although it did remind me of the original um, Wasp um, because the Wasp had the um, touch plate style uh, keys on it. Uh, which I played back in 1996, I believe. All right. Here's something interesting. I played one of these at NAMM, and I found this very interesting. It was built like a tank and sounds amazing. And this is the uh, ASM Hydrosynth Explorer Portable Polyphonic Wave Morphing Synthesizer. This is a very cool synthesizer, and it hasn't made it into my arsenal. Um, I don't know why. Um, I know Synth Samurai has the larger version of this. He has the uh, larger Hydra Synth. Um, he loves it. But uh, yeah, so I, I have, it hasn't really, I, I did like it at the show, uh, but for $5.99, man, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. Check out some of the demos. Very, very cool sounding synthesizer. Ah, here we go. This, this right here. Now, this is something I'm still interested in. This is the Behringer Poly D Polyphonic Analog Synthesizer, $5.99, boys and girls. Now, I know lots of people that have this. 
uh, and they love this thing. And some people have compared it to the Mini Moog, although there are some other features on here that the Mini Moog does not have. Uh, and I'll let you go and check some of the videos out on it. Um, but $599, killer synthesizer, built like a tank. All right, there's the ASM uh, Hydrosynth Deluxe. I believe that's the one the Samurai has. I'm not sure. Here's the Behringer Crave, which is basically a Mother 32 with a little bit more finesse, as they say, on it. Um, haven't, haven't had the desire to get a Crave, but I do like it. It's actually pretty cool. Um, and I'm just going to go through some of these real quick. Uh, again, there's some more Yamaha stuff. There's the ASM Hydrosynth 49 key. Uh, this is kind of a cool little kit right here. This is the Mark II. I actually have the original one. Um, and you get to build this yourself. It's a lot of fun to build. But this is the Mark II, and this has some actually ex extra features on it that mine doesn't have. Uh, and these sound great. And you can use them as a um, outboard effects uh, processor, delay, chorus, reverb, that kind of thing. Uh, very cool. 169 bucks, not too shabby. When I bought mine back, oh, what was it, 2019 maybe? Um, I got the first one. I'm looking at it. It's over here. It's all hooked up, though. I don't want to grab it. It'll stop pulling on cables. But this one, uh, mine cost $99, and of course, inflation and chips and all that stuff and blah, 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 and $169. Okay. There you go. And let's see. Um, here's a Roland Juno uh, DSL 61, 799. Classic Roland, I mean, well built synthesizer. You need to spend $5,000 on a synthesizer. I'm sorry. Um, I own this puppy. Uh, this is the uh, Behringer 2600. Uh, we like to call it uh, the BARP 2600. I owned it, I sold it. It just sat in a rack for a while. I played with it for a little bit. I like it. Um, just wasn't using it. Um, and, you know, it's patchable, so it's semi-modular. Uh, great synthesizer. You know, I had it for a while, and I sold it. I sold it for $375, so I got my money's worth out of it. It was three years old, you know. Uh, great synth. Um, and here we go. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this right here. The, you, you, you got to try one of these. Now, I don't know why this has a four-star review. It isn't for everyone, but I'm going to say that it's better than the Roly. I played a Roly. I did not like it. I'm old-fashioned. I like keys. This has keys. Um, I kept it because I uh, love the expression on it. I, it's poly, polyphonic uh, aftertouch. Uh you got to check out one of these if you can. I bought this because um, uh, there's a guy by the name of Marshall Arnold. He has a great channel on YouTube. I've actually been on Marshall's show a couple of times. When I used to have my, uh, uh, my podcast called EchoCast, Marshall was actually on my podcast. I interviewed him. And great synth player. He has the world's biggest collection of synths that I've ever seen one person have. Um, and he bought this and he told me I wouldn't regret it. I said, how is it? How do you like it? And he said, buy it, Echo. You wouldn't, you will not regret this. So I bought it without trying it and I'm blown away and I'm looking at it. It's over there on the new liquid stands rack. Um, and I got to tell you, it's phenomenal. It might not be for everyone. Again, it, you know, I'm just saying it might not be for everyone. However, it's a great synthesizer. The synth engine that's on it is very cool. It's all digital, but it's the express expressiveness that's key on this thing. Um, it's just, you know, I play guitar, so being able to bend notes and stuff without having to use, you know, a pitch wheel or anything like that, mind-blowing. Check it out. All right, let's go back. Uh, Keytars, not a fan of. Some people love them. Here's the Behringer K2, semi-modular. So the K2 is one, $199. The K2 basically is, um, I believe, like an MS-20 clone. Uh, very interesting synthesizer. Never really, I always liked the MS-20, but never really craved it. Never really thought it was, you know, something that I should own. But who knows? We'll see what happens. 
Ah, and here over here. 149 for this synthesizer. So I own two of these. <laughs> Um, because I fell in love with the original back in 1996 or 95, I forget when it was, uh, that had the metal touch plate keys. Um, I mean, $149. I still don't know why it's this ex inexpensive, to be honest with you. Um, this synthesizer is, is sick. Uh, if you want to, you know, go on my channel, watch the demos, watch some of the other demos. I ended up putting chicken head knobs on mine because it looks cool. Um, just on some of them, just on the switches. Um, but I got to tell you, I really enjoy uh, the Behringer Wasp. Um, 149 bucks, Crazy. You want a good analog synth? You want a fat sound? Dirty, nasty synth? That's the one. Um, I have this uh, Behringer TD3, but I have the TD3 MO. Hopefully, we'll see it on here. It looks a lot like this, uh, but the knobs are black. Um, and it also has the Devilfish. They partnered with the uh, guy who helped build the Devilfish 303 mod, and they partnered with him, and they actually basically turned my, the, the, the TD3MO is basically a Devilfish, uh, and it's nasty. It's a nasty little, uh, little synthes bass synthesizer. Uh, Novation, great stuff. Look at this, the Mini Nova. This is a great polyphonic uh, synthesizer for $449, and it has a built-in vocoder. Great, right? Here's the Novation Base Station. Base Station. Played one back in the 90s when it first came out. Well, it came out, I think, in the late 80s. But played this thing, was blown away by it. Um, you want bass synths? That's your guy. This sounds amazing. It's Novation. They make great stuff. Uh, here's the Moog DFAM, $599. Let's see. $599 and $199 for the Edge. Your choice. You decide. And the list goes on and on and on and on. I mean, look at this. Is I've got one, two, I've got 11. Let's go straight down. Let's see if we have any more. Let's see. Way down here. Oh, yeah. This, this. This just keeps going. So here's the, here's the, uh, here's the, the uh, this is the one that I own. Um, this is the uh, TD3MO uh, AM, which I got the yellow. I like it. Amber, that's what they call it, but I like it. It's got the, uh, the little, little smiley guy on here. See if we can uh, zoom in on this. Hold on a sec. I can get this happening. Oh, I don't know why. But yeah, it's a little acid smiley face. He's got he's kind of he's kind of angry actually. He's kind of cool. 249, man. Um I couldn't resist. I bought it on a whim and I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Um let's go down to 11. Let's see what we got in 11 here. That Oh, Model. There you go. Model 69 uh $692. This is the Cobalt this is a great looking synthesizer. Now the blue on this doesn't really doing it any uh, justice. In close, in person, this is a really cool synth. Um, it's an analog, uh, virtual analog synth, so it's digital, but uh, it's got some great features on it, man. Um, and it's only six ninety two. You know, something to check out, something to look at. Here's uh, my boy right here. I own one of these. I bought it when it first came out, um, and I love it. And if you go on to uh, GeoSynths uh, on YouTube, uh, Geo, uh, actually, he um, basically uh, creates patches. So I bought a bunch of patches for this, and I went in and I tweaked some of them. And I have to tell you, it's really good stuff. You know, um, you, it really is. It's good stuff, man. Um, it, I really love the DeepMind 12. And, you know, it, it is not a copy. Uh, it is not a copy of a, a, a Juno 106 at all. This is here's the thing about Behringer with this: um, the price has gone up a little bit. Oh no, this is for the bundle. Oh. Um, but here's the thing about the the Deep Mind: it's not a Juno 106. Everybody's like, "Oh, it's a Juno 106 clone." No, it's not. This is their own beast. Um, 
they got together with the guys from Midas and a couple other companies and built this from scratch. And uh, it's a great sounding synthesizer. I will say some of the faders and the knobs feel kind of cheesy, um, but it's in my it's it's over here on my my left side and I love it. It sounds amazing. Um, I use it for big pads. Yeah, sounds great. String pads. Uh, this is a mother. Uh, this is a, a matriarch by Moog. This is a great synthesizer. A lot of people like it. I tried one. I thought it sounded great. You know, analog solutions. This is an interesting little synth. Um, you know, I didn't really mention analog solutions too much last night because they were very expensive. Some of their their bigger models, but this one is a very actually very cool synth. I saw it at Nam. I didn't get a chance to play with it, but it's pretty cool, and I love the orange. You know? Uh, great, great sound and synthesizer. Check out some of the demos on that. Um, let's see what else we got. What else we got? Oh yeah, of course. You know, TD three and uh, uh, see through orange or tangerine. Um, let's see. Uh, and the list goes on, kids. Uh, check it out yourself. I'm telling you right now. Um, here's a sequential Pro three now. Um, let's see the pro three. This is nice. I tried this out. This is the special edition. Uh, when I was at Nam, I went to the sequential booth and I actually met Dave Smith. Um, great guy. I took a picture with him, talked to him for a while, asked him a few questions. At that time I had just bought my rev two. Um, and we were talking a little bit, super nice guy. And it's sad. He'll be missed. Rest in peace, Dave. Um, one of the one of the pioneers of synthesis and MIDI. He was the man who basically, with the help of I believe, Roland or Korg, uh, helped out with the um, with MIDI with with the actual MIDI. So uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, Filter, Mister Filter Sweep uh, owns one of these and swears by it. A great synthesizer, sounds amazing. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, analog solutions again is the Korg Mini Lug XD, which is great. I own a Mini Lug, an original when it first came out. I always like Studio Electronics. These little boxes right here, awesome, very cool stuff. Uh, this is the Boomstar uh, Sem Mark II analog synthesizer. Um, they make awesome. These little boxes are amazing. If you ever get a chance to check them out, they really are nice. Um, do for dock time. I I like the I think it was called the Dock Star. Um, that was one of the original ones. Uh, Five eighty nine. This is a killer analog synthesizer. If you know anything about Dofer Modular, they make great do modular stuff. Um, owned one of these. This is a Monolog, Monolog, Monolog. However you want to say it. Uh, right next to it is the OP uh, the OP six Mark II. That's the newest version. This guy right here though. 332. I bought it when it first came out. I had a red one. Um, I sold it. Probably shouldn't have, but um, I paid uh, $299 for it. So they've gone up in price a little. The red one is not in circulation anymore. So I actually got, um, I think I got $320 for it um, because it was red. And it's very sought after. Uh, it's a very sought after um, little uh, synthesizer, monolog, uh, analog synth. Yep. Here's the grandmother. So I mean, you know, you guys. I'm just telling you. You know, there are a lot of great synthesizers out there that start from a hundred dollars all the way to two thousand dollars that you can buy. Start making some great music. And you will not regret it. Will not regret it. Um, the stuff I showed last night, you know, up, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, you know, $63,000. Come on. Here's some cool stuff you guys can check out. So go on to Sweetwater's site. Go on to Craft Music site. Go on to uh, Musician's Friend. Uh, Z sounds anywhere, uh, reverb.com. Actually, uh, Sweetwater's gear exchange is very cool. Uh, they, there's a, that's where I sold some of my stuff. 
They sell a lot of great gear. Some of it's used, some of it's demos. Uh, but that is through musicians, run by musicians. That's Gear Exchange on Sweetwater. So check it out. Um, but yeah, I'm just telling you, man, a lot of great inexpensive synthesizers out there to be had, to be played with. And I know for a fact you'll be making great music. So once again, I always say stay frosty, stay creative. This is Echo Craft. Peace.